This morning in Bamako, Mali, a nation in West Africa and former French colony, they were gripped in fear as terrorists took about 170 people hostage inside the Radisson Blue Hotel. Armed with AK-47s, the terror group associated possibly with Al-Qaeda were taken down by French security forces alongside American military personnel, but not before at least 20 people died, including the gunmen. So here to tell us a little bit more about the situation is RT correspondent Lindsay France. Lindsay, tell us, how did this whole thing unfold this morning? So around 7 a.m., uh, it was reported that a car with diplomatic license plates uh, drove into the hotel grounds and gunmen hopped out with AK-47s, and that's when their operation began. Uh, so what's interesting here is that there was a diplomatic uh, negotiation going on to broker sort of peace process in Mali. There's been a huge Islamist insurgency, extremists, uh, staging attacks for the last three years at least. Uh, in, in a very concentrated way for the last three years, but it's gone on for a while. And then with uh, government upheaval. So there were a lot of foreign nationals in that hotel uh, and uh, just foreign, foreign national workers as well as the diplomats there. So it's surprising that they got in with diplomatic license right. plates. At the same time, it's not. It's the Radisson and Bamako. It's the capital. Uh, so that was, that was an interesting thing to note about, you know, how they breached the security. But then when this all played out, the uh, Malian and U UN security forces, headed up by the French, there were also U.S. special forces in the vicinity. They banded together to get the rest of the, uh, the hostages out of there. Well, that's, that's good news, of course. But yeah. what's the whole backstory with Mali? Um, they're obviously they're not a stranger to having this sort of attack happen. Yeah, that's right. Just this just this year alone, there have been 36 people killed in attacks like this in Mali. So for the past three years, it's been a big concern with the UN, and France has been working with the UN to go in and try to stabilize the situation there because there was so much government upheaval. It was it's a former French colony, so there was uh, all of these factions trying to get into this power vacuum. Al Qaeda was very successful at that, and so Al Qaeda and various affiliate groups have been recruiting and, you know, and staging attacks such as this. And so this is something that France and the UN and Mali itself are trying to figure out. Obviously, they've not been extremely successful in getting rid of the insurgents in Mali. And of course, every time something happens, they scatter and come right back. Yeah, that's a lot of power shuffle as we were exactly, talking about off big camera. Time. Um, now, what about going forward? What are some things being proposed? Well, anything? a lot of the analysts that are really weighing in on this situation specifically is to note that in Northern Africa, in Mali, in Mauritania, in all of these neighboring West African nations, uh, there's Al Qaeda, which they refer to sort of as the poisonous tree, and ISIS is like a branch off that tree. Al Qaeda is much more strong than it was pre 9 11. So, Right now, there's sort of a competition, if you will, a terrorist Olympics. As odd as that may sound, it's they're in competition. ISIS, you will not one-up us. One week later after the Paris attacks, Al-Qaeda strikes, uh, or an affiliate group at this point anyway, strikes in Bamako. And so this is how they recruit. This is how they publicize. It's all part of their propaganda. And so the fear is that these groups are doing battle for more attention and more glory. And so that's something that a lot of the uh, people who have been working on this, these issues for 20 years are saying. And the scariest part is that Al Qaeda is actually stronger than it was pre 9-11. And so how do you deal with this? And it's something that President uh, Francois Hollande from France has said, we thought we were going to be pulling out as far as our security forces. We're going in way bigger with uh, French special forces. So they're going to see a real show of strength there. Yeah, and as, as the attacks have proven, and along with this one, um, there's been obviously some uh, deficiency in intelligence, right, as we're Absolutely, saying. trying to, they're on watch lists, but then they're just being watched, and then before you know it, something like this happens, so who knows how this is all going to unfold as far as security goes. And any word if uh, the Paris attacks and this were connected? They're really trying to gather information on that right now, but right now it's, it's two different factions completely. And they're trying to sift through all of that information. We're not getting any clear indications of that right now. At, as far as we can tell, right, kind of a weird, disgusting uh, sibling rivalry. Almost. It is. It is very terrifying. It is terrifying to thank watch. You, it. Thank you so much for that. That was RT correspondent Lindsay France.